All right, would everybody like to stand with us and we'll sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders, wonders of his love. Welcome to First Baptist Church this morning. Um, just a few announcements. Uh, we will be having services next Sunday on uh, January the 1st, and we'll have a guest speaker. Uh, the gentleman has spoken here before, uh, and he is one of the people that we are examining uh, and considering for uh, our uh, pastor position. So Jesse Rodriguez will be with us here uh, next week. Uh, then also, uh, we've got a uh, group coming in uh, for a free concert on uh, January the 20th, I believe it is. And uh, so uh, keep that in mind, spread the word, and uh, they'll be here with us on that date. Um, then all of our regular activities will uh, start again uh, the week a uh, following January the 1st. So our Wednesday night activities will uh, start again in our regular uh, Sunday schedule. Uh, next Sunday, uh, uh, we will not be having our regular Sunday school time. There will just be the church service. Is that correct for next Sunday? Okay. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway... Uh, um, then um, we will be having communion this morning. It'll be a little bit different than we normally do it. Um, we'll be doing it uh, where uh, each uh, family can come up, and there'll be a deacon at each table, and, uh, and you will receive uh, communion as a family. Also, if you brought friends with you and stuff like that, those friends can come up with you in that group, and you can have uh, communion together as, as a family. And so uh, before uh, Dunamis Spirit leads us in a few more of our Christmas carols this morning, uh, why don't we take a couple of minutes and uh, welcome each other. And for those of you who are uh, newcomers or visitors this morning, uh, we welcome you in uh, celebrating Christmas with us this morning. So let's take a few minutes and greet each other. And then we'll uh, start up with some praise and worship again.
All right. Well, good morning. I'm going to say it again. Good morning. Good morning, Robbie. And Merry Christmas. Apparently, it takes a little bit longer to get ready on Christmas morning. I'm not going to blame that on my wife. It was my fault for being late. Merry Christmas, honey. Merry Christmas on that one. Anyway, sorry for being late, but I'm glad to be here now with you guys. So we're going to sing a couple of more songs. If you want to stand with us, we're going to sing, Oh, Come, All Ye Faithful. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh, And the mountains in reply 
echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo. What the gladsome tidings be Which inspire your heavenly song Gloria In excelsis Deo sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. right now that's it well the deacons let us pray Lord we thank you for this day and now Lord as um, your people in this place Give back, Lord, some of what you have entrusted them. We ask, Lord, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it, and that it would do awesome things for your kingdom work. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord. Amen.
All right. Uh, as you'll notice, we didn't sing as long as we normally do because I told them I needed around an hour uh, to preach this morning. So uh, anyway, they kind of cut it short. Um, those of you who have been attending uh, for the last few weeks, uh, uh, Pastor Hooker has preached uh, on various aspects of the uh, nativity story. And uh, the first week he preached, he mentioned about uh, a beautiful hymn that we sing each year around Christmas time called Silent Night. And, and it mentioned in one of the, the uh, uh, phrases in the song is all is calm and all is bright. And in these three or four weeks that he's been preaching on the Christmas story, uh, he pointed out that uh, not everything was nice and calm. And that if you go back and you study the scripture, uh, you find out uh, that as in our normal daily lives that we go through now, uh, there was a lot of complexity uh, connected with the uh, Christmas story. Um, and when you go back and study the, uh, the customs in the Middle East and in the uh, Jewish uh, faith, uh, uh, you find out that uh, uh, things... Uh, did not go uh, as smooth and stuff as some of the uh, songs and stuff that we sing. And uh, that uh, there was a lot of, of turmoil and a lot of things that had to happen in order to pull off uh, the awesome birth of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as we celebrate Christmas, uh, we've also been uh, adopted a custom several years ago that existed in some of the other churches uh, lighting the Advent candle. And so this morning, we have all five candles lit, and uh, that fifth candle uh, celebrating uh, the birth of uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this morning, uh, I wanted to touch on something that uh, uh, I know I don't, think about all that much, and um, that's real important. Uh, we know that uh, when Jesus died on the cross, more than the physical and mental suffering that he went through, there was that moment in time when he bore all of the burden and all of the nastiness and stuff of all of the sins of the world. And there was a time that it was such a, a spiritual torture that he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And with Jesus, before he took on human flesh, being a part of the Godhead, that cutting off for that space and time from his father to absorb that punishment and that penalty for our sin was worse than the physical torment and the mental torment that he had to go through. And uh, sometimes I think that we forget that when Jesus was born in the flesh, he wasn't like Superman. Uh, Superman could fly. Uh, you could shoot bullets at him and it wouldn't kill him and stuff like that. And sometimes I think if we're not careful, we can view that Jesus, when uh, 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 he was a Superman. But when Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, he was like we were, or are like we are. If you uh, cut him with a knife, he bled and it hurt. And so, uh, th this wasn't something that uh, he could just go through life and not go through the things that we go through in the flesh. Uh, but I wanted to, to, to touch on some scriptures to show uh, some things that, that, that we might need to consider about Jesus this morning. And the first scripture that I wanted to look at is in... Uh, the first chapter of John, 
ch- starting with chapter 1 where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the light was the light of men. Now, this is a very key scripture, and it tells us who Jesus was. Now, what is one of the things that's emphasized in there? It says that Jesus was the Word. And it says that this Word was uh, in the beginning. It's always been there. Now, if Jesus was the Word, how powerful, what kind of power, what kind of awesomeness are we talking about here? If you go back and look at Genesis, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the waters, uh, divided the light from the darkness. Then it goes on. God called the light day, the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were on the first day. Then in chapter 6, it, I mean verse 6, it says, Then God said... Let there be firmament. And it goes on through creation that God said that God said. All right, what did we just say in John chapter 1, verse 1? Jesus was the Word. So when God said, that was the Word. And when that Word was spoken, the Spirit took action and whatever was spoken came into being. That's how powerful, that's the awesomeness of Jesus, the Son of God. A spoken word, and it existed. Now, let's go to Philippians and see what happened when Jesus took on flesh. It says in Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery, to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death on the cross. This powerful word, this aspect of God that when he spoke, stuff came into existence from nothing. And it says in Philippians that he emptied himself of that and took on flesh. Now, when we look at some of the other scriptures, when Jesus is talking about and teaching, he, he, he says, I do not say anything except what my Father tells me to say. 
when he was operating here on earth. We can look at the scriptures and we can see that Jesus performed many miracle and miraculous things. He rose, uh, he could uh, speak and someone could be raised from the dead. He made the blind to see, the lame to walk. But he says, I didn't do any of that unless my father told me to do it. Now, also if we study the scriptures, we can see that he did not, was everybody that was sick or ailing in the entire countryside of Galilee, Samaria, and Judea healed? No. Was every person who ever died during his public ministry raised from the dead? No. He did, taught, and said what the Father taught him or told him to say. When we go back and look at the Christmas story, what would have happened had Joseph not been a man who would listen to the Word of God? Men, ask yourself how many uh, of us, especially in our early days, if we came across a situation where the woman that we were, was in love with it turned out to be pregnant. Uh, what if you, uh, how many of us have seen angels and an angel has talked to us? I know that hasn't happened to me. But yet after uh, Jesus was born, what would have happened if uh, Joseph would have not listened to the angel he had never, uh, prior to the angel appearing to him and telling him the situation with Mary and stuff, we did, he had never seen an angel. But if he hadn't have gotten out of town and gone to Egypt, what would have happened? Because that baby wasn't going to get up out of that crib and start fighting off Herod soldiers. That wasn't going to happen. And so... the. Uh, When we consider Jesus' birth, Jesus gave up all that he was in the Godhead when he took on flesh. And so his trust, his faith, the things that he did, and his being sustained was all dependent upon the Father. How many of us as human beings, even whatever little power, whatever we have right now, would we give all of that up and go a completely different way for strangers? Would we give up Massive amounts of power and empty ourselves out for strangers. But you know what's scary about that? The Word of God says that once we become believers, we are supposed to empty ourselves out. for the gospel. In the United States today, even though sometimes we'll sit around at Starbucks and drink some nice coffee and stuff like that and gripe about how bad the economy is, there are a lot of things that we can do in this great country that in and of themselves are not sin. But God says in his word, to whom much is given, much is expected. And so, 
when we look at what Jesus gave up and what he trusted in his Father for when he took on flesh, what are we supposed to walk away from? What, or how are we supposed to use our job and the sustenance we get from it? Our car, our house, the time that we have, what are we supposed to be emptying that out on compared to what we do? So when we examine all that Christ gave up in order to come into the flesh and, and provide that sacrifice for us, and provide that victory for us. Empty himself out for us. When we have life choices to make, how are we supposed to be emptying ourselves out? The last scripture that I want to go into is out of Luke. And I want to leave it on this note. After Jesus was born, they took him to the temple and they run into this guy, Simeon. And if we look at Luke chapter 2, verse 25, it says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do to him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before. Now this is... This is what's awesome about this. This man is Simeon. He is a Jew. But listen to what he says. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. What does all mean? All means all. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. How many in here are of Jewish heritage? If you're not of Jewish heritage, what are you? You're a Gentile. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Here is this man brought up in the Jewish tradition and stuff and when you look at the Gospels, there was a resistance by the Jewish people, even though they were called out by God to be the people who would actually represent God and spread His Word. There was a resistance to that. But this man says that you prepared this before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Even after Christ ascended into heaven, there was still a dispute about this. You can go and look at the story of Peter going to the Roman centurion's house, preaching the gospel, and before he even finished preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell, and these people became believers. And when Peter got back to Jerusalem, the believers the Jewish believers in Christ in Jerusalem chewed him out for going and speaking the word to the Gentiles. 
And poor old Peter, he had to say, well, wait a minute. What else was I supposed to do? The Lord told me to go. I went there and preached the gospel, and they accepted it. What did you expect me to do? But the awesomeness of this is realizing everything that Jesus gave up when he was born in the flesh for us. And we're asked to pour out our lives as believers as well for the awesome news that Jesus Christ was prepared to do what he did for all peoples. And then it's reemphasized even unto all the Gentiles. So this morning, when we think about the birth of Christ, and we can think about the crucifixion and all of the pain and stuff he went through, but imagining, imagine emptying yourself of all the power that God is to live down here and teach us and present that sacrifice and have that victory over death. If we could keep that in our minds and hearts all the time, and I know it's, I have trouble with that, how much more could our lives change this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in our humanness, fully comprehending everything that you've done for us is so huge, so big, in some cases such a mystery that we have a hard time totally grasping it. But we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done as our Father. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done through your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that as believers we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And we thank you for your word that we can study and that we can become close to you and more mature in you. And we thank you for that blood sacrifice and that and Jesus standing in the gap for us and paying the price for us. And now, Lord, as we celebrate the Eucharist, as we celebrate communion together as a family, we do it in remembrance of all that Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. And we give you thanks and praise in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So men that are going to man our communion tables, if you'll get ready. Remembering that on the night before he died, he met with his disciples. And he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he passed it out to those followers in that room that night. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering that his body was going to be tortured and broken for them and for all of us. And then he took the cup of the wine and he said, do this. This is my blood which I will shed for you. The new covenant. Now, in our Baptist tradition, anyone that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is welcome to these communion tables. Those of you who've studied various religions and stuff know that there's three different concepts concerning communion. In your Catholic and Episcopal tradition, there is the tradition that it is the actual body and blood of Christ. In other traditions, it's spiritually the body and blood of Christ. In this tradition, we look and 
it is it represents the body and blood of Christ I am not a theologian I don't have all the answers if you ask me to prove which one of those traditions is the absolute truth I'm sorry to let you down I don't know but I do know the word says that communion is sacred extremely sacred and that we are to observe this to remember what Jesus did for us and I've heard testimonies from missionaries and stuff like that that miracles have occurred during communion time in places in this world people spiritually healed people mentally healed people physically healed communion is sacred and it is beautiful and it is an awesome gift so this morning as we take that uh, we'll start up here at the front and come down as friends and families in a group and let's celebrate the life the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ
Do you all know how awesome you all are this morning? I was reading on the internet something that kind of concerned me. They said since Christmas fell on Sunday this year that this might be one of the lowest attended Sunday services across this nation. But you all as believers have chosen to show up in this place this day. And that's awesome. And another thing, I like proving people wrong. Atheists came out with posters in big cities this year, big billboards that said, Make Christmas great again, Miss Church. Thank God for you all who prove them wrong. This morning we're going to end our service. So if you all will stand and join hands and we're going to sing Silent Night. Silent Night Holy Night All is calm All is bright Round yon virgin Mother and child Holy infant so Merry Christmas. And if we don't see you next week, Happy New Year, but we better see you next week. <laughs> All right? Let's do verse 3. Yeah. Okay. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love your light, Thy holy face with